Well, good morning, everyone, and happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to the folks at home as well. Uh, very festive, some of you, dressed in your red, white, and blue. Uh, so, announcements. All right. Is there any objection? Uh, Harry talked to me beforehand, and um, of course this is up to the board, but what he has proposed is that we have a board meeting after church next week. And of course, I'll be here. It'll be one of the Sundays I'm here. And uh, start Sunday school the first Sunday in August. Okay, and there's some other things we've got to discuss as well as far as the board goes. Hand that to me. I'm coming to you. I'll come to you. How's that? It's thank you, sir. It's a no, and it came in detail to the church. Oh, thank you. Okay, good, good. Okay, so, you know, I. I'm out in the public, of course, and, and you guys are as well, and, and I uh, give people a business card and, you know, say, hey, you know, follow us on Facebook, this is us. It's just a little soft introduction. And then I had this idea that what if everybody had one that was an introduction to Independence United Methodist Church? So we have a website. It's not up yet, but it's almost up, right? <laughs> Okay, so we have a YouTube channel now, we've got an active Facebook page, a lot of wonderful things going on, and, but most importantly, there's wonderful stuff happening right here at Independence United Methodist Church. We, unlike most churches, have grown during the pandemic, so, and we will continue to grow. There's, there's wonderful things happening, and I know God has got a lot in store for us. So I had this idea to create these little business cards, and they're just a soft introduction. So when you're talking to someone about the church, you can simply hand them one of these. Okay, and I invite people a lot of times, you know, hey, just join us on Facebook and see what you think. Isn't that right, folks? I know some of you are watching who got that invite. And, um, and it gives them that easy invitation to come to church and see what we are about. Because so many people, and I'm one of them, have been hurt by churches. And it's really hard to trust that you're going to be loved when you walk in here. We have a family sitting here on the front row this morning that felt that love when they came in. And, and of course, have transferred their membership here because of it. And so... And I know the love that you guys have for other people and how accepting you are. It's just hard for people who haven't met you to believe that. Okay, so I'm going to hand these out. Here you go, Harry. And uh, I got lots of them. So uh, take as many as you want. And if you want more, get more. And Ruth, you can hand them out at Walmart, can't you? <laughs> I gave her a whole bunch of them. <laughs> there we go. Here. Mark, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, sir. Better to be here than on Facebook, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> There's plenty. Pass them down. Roy Lee. There we go. Okay. You want more? Okay. Up here. And you guys, of course. There you go, Mama. <laughs> you got the one. So uh, there's a few more there. I got a whole nother box of those at home, and we'll bring them next week. So, uh, so everybody's good with doing the board meeting next Sunday? Yes? Okay, no ascension. All right, good. Last week of Disciple One Bible Study is this Tuesday, after 24 weeks. Uh, it's been a wonderful Bible study, hasn't it? And uh, we're going to take the summer off. I'm going to work on the uh, New Believers Bible Study. So, and get that going soon, I pray. Any other announcements for the good of the church or the community? Love Offering Sunday. Thank you very much. It is Love Offering Sunday, and it's also Communion Sunday. And Independence Day, being able to worship on Independence Day, uh, is really special for us here at Independence. Independence United Methodist was founded in the year that 1783, that we formally... Uh, became independent of Great Britain, September 3rd, 1783. The treaty was signed, the Treaty of Paris, and uh, was signed, 
and that formalized our independence from them. And, uh, and we were born that year and have been continually active since then. And for people that haven't, don't know this, we are the fifth oldest continually active Methodist church in the country, and we are the oldest in the South. So, with that being said, oh, one, one other thing. Here's a note, and I need to read this. Be a good pastor. This is a thank you from Neil. Dear church family, I would like to thank everyone for the thoughts and prayers and the cards, but especially the money, which at this time will be very helpful since I am unable to work due to my stroke. I appreciate it very much. My recovery is coming along slow, but I'm improving, but still would appreciate your prayers. With much love, Neil Kingram. And God bless you, brother. God bless you, brother, and we continue to pray for you. And the yard sale, don't forget. Thank you. This next week. Thing. Yes, it's this Friday coming week. And Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Yes. And we will be starting between 5 and 6. In the morning. Saturday on oh, Friday. Friday. Between 5 and 6. Yeah. I'll be here. Day. I'll be here. And Thursday afternoon, um, we have a few things that we have to move. So we'll be up here probably Thursday afternoon. Okay. All able back. Yes. Uh, let me make a note here. I got a person I'm gonna get to help y'all. Y'all need him with on Thursday afternoon or Friday morning. Friday morning. Well, he called. He called me up. Yes. Uh, well, he was thinking about trying to call me yesterday morning between five and six o'clock. I don't know what the yard thing is. <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> um, well, now what time Thursday? Uh, I, we're not sure because Katha was has to go get the rest of the stuff out of the um, parsonage. Okay. And we were going to try to tie it all in together in the afternoon. Okay. So it'll be later in the day. We know because Roy and. Owen had to get but together. But I can't do it till, till Thursday night. Owen will be yeah. no matter what, like 7 o'clock. So 7 o'clock? Well, Owen can. Yeah. Okay. We'll probably get it down earlier because I got another load of stuff in yeah. yesterday. Okay. That has to be March. So okay. We'll probably be here. Well, they send you work. Yeah. All right. Uh, I got a trailer. I got a 12 foot trailer then as well that I can bring. And if that'll help to get the stuff out of the parsonage. Uh, ladies, just tell me where, where, and when you need me, and I will be there. That would be epic. I think. Don't you think we can get it in three trucks? I, I, I hope so. I don't. I'm not sure where I think, but we will have three trucks, so we think we can get it in three trucks. But okay. I don't know. I think we can. All right. Okay. So I've got a load of stuff in my truck right now for the yard sale, and but I was pretty sure you didn't want me to bring it down yet. So well, I didn't bring it until you said yay. Well, uh, maybe D could put that in <laughs> to church cause because Thursday it looks like Bonnie and myself and uh, Patsy might have to work earlier. Yeah, and I put some the, all the horse and dog there in the kitchen over there. You know. Okay. Okay. If you got stuff, let me go ahead and put it in after church. Uh, I got one thing I got to work on, but I won't have time after church to unload it. So. Well, how uh, much is it? Huh? How much is it? Because uh, I, I take, take these young gentlemen right here and we can do it right now. And let me tell you, this, this family right here can move some stuff. That's <laughs> what I'm Quick. saying. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, we'll do that. Okay, so we'll just we can just grab it out and put it on the ground, and then I can go on to uh, the next church. Okay, all right. So yard sale, folks at home. If you live within an hour's drive of here, it's worth an hour and a half. It's worth the trip. Friday and Saturday, the sale actually starts at seven. Yeah. Each day. It starts at seven, but, but we have to be here to put it. At yes. Early. Between five. And six. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good. 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 All right, let us begin our time of worship. Our opening hymn is number 696, America the Beautiful.
keep on going, don't it? <laughs> this way to play a miracle. Uh, <clears throat> please join me in the call to worship, which is based on Mark chapter 6. Lord, what you have asked is not easy to do. The task is so big and requires the best and the worst of us. It is not easy to bury the ego, but we must for the sake of your mission. When we protest the things that aren't of you, we'll be persecuted. Loving requires a level of vulnerability that is scary, as scary can be. Let us pray. Almighty God, you rule all the peoples of the earth. Inspire the minds of all women and men to whom you have committed the responsibility of government and leadership in the nations of the world. Give to them the vision of truth and justice, that by their counsel all nations and peoples may work together. Give to the people of our country zeal for justice and strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Forgive our shortcomings as a nation. Purify our hearts to see and love the truth. We pray all these things through Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we come to our time of joys and concern. Um, are there uh, others? Any updates on the folks on our prayer list? How's Neil doing? Um, Neil is, I think, improving slowly. Good. Good, good, good. Has a long ways to go. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Still praying. I'd like to put Doc Justice on the prayer list. Doc Justice? Yes. And I would like to tell everybody that Pat Alwick called me this week. Yes. And she wanted everybody to know that she asked about everybody in the church <laughs> and that she's doing well now and that she's home. Thank you. Thank you so much. She's something else, isn't she? She is. <laughs> she is, she is. I got to have a nice exchange with her uh, related to the daily devotions uh, <laughs> this week she as well. She said she watches us. Yes, she does. Hi, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Uh, let everybody say hi to Pat. Now, hold on, let me go real slow. <laughs> there you go, Miss Pat. We love you, darling. Uh, any others we can add to our prayer list? Any joys? Uh, let's remember the Bevel family. Pete Bevel passed away. Pat Bevel, and she's a, they're from Richmond. Mm -hmm. She's a real supporter of our yard sale. And I can't tell you how much stuff <laughs> she has dragged down here to me for the yard sale from Richmond. And uh, she lost her husband. Okay, thank you. thank you. Let us come to our Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the healing that has been provided and by you, by your loving touch. We pray, Lord, that for our country on this Independence Day, there are so many people suffering and then there's concern, our first hurricane coming, and while people sift through rubble with hope upon hope that somebody is still alive in that pile of debris, and Lord, if they are, we pray that you guide those workers to them. And Lord, we, we pray for safety as the rest of that building is demolished. And we pray for those families. We pray for those families that have lost loved ones. And the families here that we know that have lost loved ones are as well and continue to mourn. And 
Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be a country who loves. To do things based on love, your love that you taught us, that you give us to share. Help that to be our basis for our decisions and how we carry out our lives. Each and every day in all that we do. Join me now in the prayer Jesus taught us as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for the Holy Spirit. Oh, no, offering, offering. We do the offering now. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lord. For us, as we come forward, please. I started to say getting used to new things, but I guess it's new old things. <laughs> We're going to have to figure out how to play some music during this time. <laughs> yeah, but it's at the end. But music while we're doing this part. Usually, if we had a piano, she, he or she would be playing something. Oh, my parents told me to so freely and so abundantly, we ask you, Lord, to bless them as you bless us. Amen. And you may be seated. Now, please join me for the prayer for the Holy Spirit found in your bulletins. And give Roy Lee and Randy a chance to get back. Dear Heavenly Father, the original settlers of our nation came seeking religious freedom. Freedom was eventually won by our forefathers and mothers who gave their lives to it. Let us not take our freedom of religion for granted and do our part to glorify your kingdom by being true disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ivan. Our first readings will come from 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 to 5 and 9 to 10. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, you will, be, you will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. David then took up residence in the fortress and called it the City of David. He built up the area around it, 
from the terraces inward. And he became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. And our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. I know a man in Christ who, 14 years ago, was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I will not be a fool, because I will be speaking the truth. But if I refrain, so no one would think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient to you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. When I am weak, then I am strong. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Hey, there you go, Ivan. You wrote it down. <laughs> smart man, smart man. Uh, please stand as you're able for our next hymn, number 569, A Story to Tell the Nations. <laughs>
passage today comes from Mark chapter 6, starting at verse 1. The people of Nazareth refused to believe this is entitled. Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. And they asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? And then they scoffed. He's just a carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and his sisters right, live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe him. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus went from village to village teaching people, and he called his twelve disciples together and began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. He told them to take nothing for their journey except a walking stick, no food, no traveler's bag, no money. He allowed them to wear sandals, but not to take a change of clothing. Wherever you go, he said, stay in the same house until you leave town. But if any place refuses to welcome you or listen to you, shake its dust from your feet as you leave to show them that you have abandoned those people to their fate. So the disciples went out, telling everyone they met to repent of their sins and turn to God. And they cast out many demons and healed many sick people, anointing them with olive oil. talking to anybody this week? You want to share about it? I'm not going to share about it, but he kicked me slam in the forehead and then in the back of the head this week, and I needed it. I needed it very much. I had lost my focus. So, thank you, Lord. And yes, it hurt. Still aches a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Mm. This day, this day, as we think about our home, let, let, us, let us define truly for ourselves what that means. What that means for us as individuals and us as a community in Christ. And may the meditations of my heart and the words of my lips be yours and yours alone. Amen. Amen. So what is in a home? I used to go home for the July 4th holiday as often as I could, and there was a regular gathering at my sister Gail's house for a cookout. And the food, while exceptional, wasn't the focal point. The focal point was family and being home in South Carolina. Our Old Testament scripture today begins with a plea to recognize kinship. The tribes of the northern kingdom had come to David, the new established king of Judah, and asked to be included under his leadership and authority. They recognized a relationship and that David has long been the source of their strength and direction even while Saul was still the king. And they want to be united as one nation, shepherded by David. So they call on their kinship. You are our bone and flesh, they argue. How can you refuse to unite with us to rule over us. We are family. Mi casa, su casa. My house is your house. 
Another dynamic working in this Second Samuel text is the establishment of Jerusalem as the home. Now, our reading today called for us to skip over verses 6 through 8, where it talks about David and the army taking over Jerusalem. I'm pretty sure that's the one where they snuck in through the tunnel because it was a mighty fortress to get in. Um, so this is only the beginning, of course, as the temple and the home of God is yet to be built. But the city becomes, with the person of David, the magnet that draws the newly formed or perhaps reformed covenantal family of God, the Hebrews, the Jews, together. Jerusalem, like David, grew and became greater and greater. The city was built from the terraces or ramparts inward. These are the fortifications that surround the city. Protection, then settlement. Walls, then living space. You see, because home is a safe place of safety first, then comfort and sustenance. Come home to this, the security of this place we've built under God. Come home. Home is a place of safety and a place of peace. You see, there's a pull toward home for all of us in the best and the worst of situations. We are all like those birds who baffle scientists with their ability to find their way home. Or the salmon who swim upstream for miles to get to the spawning grounds, to get home. And home for them is the place they, as eggs, started out. You know, if you want a symbol of God, these eggs are laid and fertilized and eventually hatched as they get flushed down those rivers. And for two to five years, those salmon grow and they go right back to the same exact place. God. Show me the way to go home. Robert Frost said, home is the place where, when you have to go there, they will take you in regardless. Or do they? Jesus went home in our gospel text this weekend, and, and there wasn't a whole lot of taking in going on there, as, as you see from the text. And the gospel text gives us two passages this week, and it's hard to see how they relate to each other. Jesus goes home. Why he goes home, Mark doesn't say. You know, Mark is kind of given to, not isn't given to reveal motivations and deliberations, just the facts, man. Just the facts, as Sergeant Friday would say. And he's just, he just says that Jesus went home. And but we can, we can imagine why Jesus went home. He went home because he's like us. He goes home for the same reasons we go home. He goes home because, well, but because it's home. He goes for comfort. He goes for identity's sake. He goes because maybe he thinks that Robert Frost is right, and no matter what he has done to this point, they will take him in. Or maybe he's riding a bit of a high and wants to share with those who know him best. The previous chapters have Jesus performing all sorts of incredible acts and going, and now is going home to let them see that a local boy has made good. Or maybe he's going home to try and heal what might have been a broken misunderstanding. You see, if you go back to chapter 3 in Mark's story, Jesus heals the man with the withered hand and gets in a fight with the authorities who wished he had waited a day to do this because he healed this man on the Sabbath. But the crowds loved Jesus and came by the hundreds. And then Jesus took a teaching time out with his disciples and went up to a mountain and taught and prayed. But word got back home, you see. And their conclusion was the meaning that Jesus had lost his way. Carpenter kids from Nazareth don't go off and do things like this. 
He's upsetting the powers that be and drawing attention to himself in all sorts of ways. And he must be off his rocker and his family came to see him and to bring him home. But when they got there and word got to Jesus that they were there, that his mother and his brothers were there, Jesus says, who is my mother? Who is my brother? I've always thought or wondered how Mary felt when she heard that. It had to hurt. So maybe in chapter 6, Jesus goes home to explain what he really meant. Maybe he goes to heal the hurts of misunderstanding. Maybe he goes to give the family another chance to catch the larger vision of what family might mean. What family needs to mean to live in the world in which we live. So he tries again. And it works. But only for a moment or two. He spoke in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And they were astounded. But just for a moment. When they listened to his words, they were astounded by him. And they were swept up in his vision and they leaned into his promise. Until somebody said, hey, wait a minute. Isn't this that carpenter kid? Who does he think he is? And then everything kind of fell apart. And they turned away from him because they thought they knew him. They turned against him because they thought he should stay in his place. And they called him names. You know, this doesn't sound so bad in the scriptures. They say, he's son of Mary. He's the son of Mary. Now, the honorable name for him would have been Bar Joseph. But Jesus, as far as they're concerned, was born out of wedlock. Son of Mary is an horrendous insult. See, there it is. There's the real story. In many people's eyes in Nazareth, he, Nazareth, he is still the child of an unwed mother. And they laughed and they sneered and they ignored him. And even Jesus was amazed at the level of their disrespect. In Luke's version of this story, they were going to throw him off a cliff. Jesus went home, but home didn't take him in. With my backstory that you guys know, I'm more surprised when people accept me for who I am now. Because the people at home knew who I was back then. For most of us, there is the desire to go home, or maybe better, there is within us the desire to be home, to be welcome home, to feel at home. And if home won't take you in, what is left? Well, if you're Jesus, or one of his disciples, you shake the dust off of that town, off of that town, off your feet, and you go and you do more ministry, and this time, Jesus stepped it up. He called the twelve and sent them out two by two. That's what's left when home has left you. You make a new one. He sent them out to create a sense of community, to build relationships, to care for those they met, to trust them, to rely on them, to make yourself at home with them. Jesus' vision of evangelism or of mission, and he never really separated those two. As far as, as far as anyone can tell, anyway. It, see, his, his vision of evangelism and mission is not one of winning souls or of drive-by mission of efforts. No, Jesus seems most interested in relationships. His work is done in the presence of relationships. And because the people of Nazareth refused to enter into a relationship with him, he could do no deed of power there. You see, home is not so much a place 
as it is a level of relationship. It is a welcome. Robert Frost was right. They will take you in at home. But Jesus tells us that home is about a commitment to a vision of home. The home he called the kingdom of God. And a commitment to love one another. And with the same kind of love he pours out on us. See, Jesus is always trying to show us the way home. That, is that, not, that it is not so much a place as it is a state of being, of being people who love God and love their neighbors. On this holiday weekend, it seems to me that what we really celebrate is neither a historical happenstance nor the glories of a richly blessed nation. Instead, it is an ideal, a vision of what we could be, of what we long to be. We are extremely unique as a nation. We fought one of the greatest powers in the world, if not the greatest power in the world at the time. And a bunch of has-been country boys with the help of another nation toward the end beat them. They founded the country on a belief in God. A belief in God and a belief in all people created equal. We are all one, united together. We established a democracy where everyone has a voice. We who call the United States of America home love our country. And at the same time, we hope for more. More justice for all. More equality. More hospitality. And more followers of Jesus Christ. We celebrate, we celebrate who we are even. Even as we celebrate who we might be. The Declaration of Independence says we hold these truths to be self-evident. We all want a country that feels like home, which means we need people, all of the people, of the people, by the people, for the people, to show us the way to be a home. Show us the way to be a home, a home for all of God's children. That's home here, and it will do for now. However, we all know the saying from Hebrews 13, 14. For this world is not our permanent home. We are looking for a home yet to come. Amen. Amen and amen. How are we doing on time? Oh, okay. Please turn in your handles to page 12. Does everyone have... Oh, we need two more. Uh, Two more of those, these guys back in the back. Thank you for Betty and Beth. Thank you so much. Take two, they're free. <laughs> Folks at home, uh, we're going to do communion, and uh, if you have some juice and some bread, it doesn't matter what kind of juice or what kind of bread, or, or maybe even just a cracker, please join us, and your, your elements will be blessed as well. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please pray in silence, lifting your sins up to him and repent.
Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. On page 13 under the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and in their homes and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine and make them be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again. Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. You may remove your mask today. Amen and amen. Please stand as you're able for our closing hymn, number 697, America.
Let's hear this benediction. Home is where the heart is. Home is where the heart is. May our hearts be filled with the Holy Spirit. May our hearts be focused on God. May our hearts honor the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ, given so freely to us to take away our sins. May that be our home where our heart is. Amen. Amen. God bless you, folks. And one more thing. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to thank Uncle Roy for fixing our carpet up here at the altar. Oh, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, folks at home. Love you guys.